for Colombians in conflict areas, these Havana talks, no doubt, are, are the most significant event in their lives. There is some hope in Colombians, but still a high degree of skepticism about which is going to be the outcome of this peace process. My name is Scott Malcolmson. I'm Director of Communications at International Crisis Group, here today with Javier Cirolita, the Director of our Latin American Caribbean program, and Christian Volkel, our Andes and Colombia analyst. Colombia has entered, hopefully, a new era with peace talks between the government and the country's largest armed guerrilla group, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, known by its Spanish acronym FARC. The talk started on October 2012 and is hoped that they will be ended uh, at the end of 2013. The conflict has been going on for nearly five decades, has killed about 220,000 people and displaced about five million. These talks represent the best hope for a negotiated and to the conflict, both sides have realized that they cannot win through war. What does this mean for the average uh, Colombian citizen? Well, Colombia has a, its a best opportunity in many years to put an end to a conflict that is uh, near to half century. It started in 1964, uh, it came through different stages, and at this time Colombians are pretty certain that there is no possibility that a military victory can uh, sort out all the problems derived from the conflict. So it is plausible that the initiative by President Santos and the current talks can become the best uh, chance to come to a comprehensive agreement. If you ask people in urban areas, especially there are people from the middle class and upper middle class, so the better or the straighter, um, they are not uh, that concerned. It's not such a priority for them because simply the conflict is now a decade, more than a decade, that the direct impact of the conflicts have not been seen much directly in the Colombian urban centers. Mm -hmm. However, the thing is very different once you get into the regions where the conflict is still a daily reality, so where you have clashes between FARC and the government, where the paramilitaries or redicts of the paramilitaries at least are still moving around, threatening human rights defenders on a daily basis, threatening communities. For Colombians in conflict areas, these Havana talks no doubt are, are the most significant event in their lives because they potentially represent really a game-changing opportunity to end the conflict. You've just released a report on transitional justice in Colombia. Colombia has already had considerable experience with transitional justice, particularly under the 2005 Justice and Peace Law. What lessons have been learned from that experience and uh, what proposals do we have to take those lessons learned and, and improve on what's been done in the past? Uh, the Peace and Justice Law has uh, brought to Colombia uh, an important amount of truth that would have been difficult to get otherwise and it created for the first time in Colombia a pretty clear conscience about the importance of the rights of the victims and those are two significant advances. However, only 14 uh, persons uh, out of the more than 3,000 that were submitted to the legal procedures have uh, received final convictions and the reparation process had to be reviewed in the meantime because the initial design was pretty deficient. So the peace process in Havana will uh, need to learn about both the advantages and the deficiencies of the peace and justice law in order to provide a much more comprehensive offer for victims at the same time to improve and strengthen the legal certainties for the guerrilla members that were pretty affected during all these eight years since the Peace and Justice Law in 2005. That's a, that's a fairly low rate of convictions, uh, obviously. Is there a sense now that, that the relative importance of, of criminal cases is lower and, and other means of dispensing justice become more important? Transitional justice is not criminal justice. Criminal justice is a component of uh, transitional justice that will need to be complemented by other forms of inquiries, other forms of truth-seeking and truth-telling, and particularly significant uh, tools for reforming the institutions and guaranteeing the non-repetition. So in this report, we are proposing a set of these mechanisms 
that has to be implemented in an interconnected way. Uh, so we are talking about a, a powerful truth commission, a significant improvement of the reparation process, a comprehensive demobilization, disarmament, and reintegration process, which together with the prosecution of the most responsible can create a much better environment both for victims and also for the stability of the agreement. When, when you talk about reparations by former guerrillas and reintegration of former guerrillas into Colombian society, uh, can you explain how you, how you hit a balance between reintegration and having, having reparations and what sort of reparations would you expect from former guerrilla fighters? There are several ways in which guerrilla fighters, former guerrilla fighters, demobilized fighters, could usefully contribute to reparations. And these include, for instance, um, the more not so material but more symbolic measures of reparations, like asking for pardons, um, participating in community works to advance public works, which then have a reparatory purpose. Um, but they also um, should contribute materially as far as they can. So we call on uh, the Colombian guerrillas to disclose all their assets uh, they might have um, to, in order to contribute to reparations. The government of President Santos has placed quite a bit of emphasis on these peace negotiations. They also face a fair amount of political opposition in Colombia, uh, most notably led by President Santos's predecessor, President Uribe. Does this focus minds on getting the peace negotiations done because President Santos is so committed to them, or does it make them uh, a great deal more complicated? President Santos still enjoys uh, significant popular support in terms of keeping the negotiations alive. However, certain topics are uh, uh, hotly debated in Colombian society, particularly the balance between, between peace and justice and the doses of impunity that the Colombian society will need to take uh, as a prize for, just, for, for the peace agreement. And in this debate, uh, former President Uribe and his associates have been waging a very active campaign against not only on the details of the peace agreement, but on the, on the idea to negotiate with what he and his associate considers terrorists. So arguing that uh, discussing with FARC is granting uh, this, this guerrilla organization a sort of legal recognition and due because it's a terrorist group is, is, is a very appealing argument to many Colombians that lived uh, during 10 years under President Uribe with the hope to defeat the threat represented by the guerrilla and other illegal armed groups. However, as, as we uh, consider in the report and also uh, reiterated by Luis Arbor uh, during her past uh, visit uh, in, in Colombia, negotiating with terrorists is not the discussion. Uh, is putting an end to a conflict that has caused the lives of more than 200,000 people, displaced more than 5 million, and that need to be stopped. And of course, a balance of justice and peace will be uh, needed, but the spoilers, both from the right and the left, uh, will need to accommodate and will need to make compromise in order to get this agreement done and make it viable. Is it your sense that transitional justice is going to be, in the end, a central part of any peace agreement? Transitional justice is perhaps the best uh, choice that the parties have to uh, settle a conflict which uh, is not possible to settle through the traditional means. I'm referring to the full amnesties, uh, mutual pardons, and turning the page mode that have uh, characterized uh, the previous uh, peace agreements not only in Colombia but throughout the world. Nowadays, this kind of turning the page mode is not possible, it's not viable, both because international law have imposed significant uh, restraints and stringent conditions for peace talks, but also because the Colombians need to see that some doses of justice is really and effectively uh, met. So uh, transitional justice will become the center of, uh, of the talks in Havana and will surely be one of the conditions upon which the rest of the agenda will be built, particularly when we talk about the reintegration of FARC and the conditions upon which this organization can participate legally and with legitimacy in the political life in Colombia. Will there be a moment when the Colombian people are able to register their support or disapproval of an eventual agreement? President Santos has repeatedly, and his peace commissioner, Sergio Jaramillo, has repeatedly as well, 
promise that Colombians will have an opportunity to either approve or reject a peace deal. What, in our report, are the main innovations we're proposing that will have the effect of making transitional justice more likely to succeed in the framework of the negotiations underway in Havana? Four legs of the peace table, truth, justice, reparation, and guarantees of non-repetition, find in the report specific measures with very detailed recommendations that can be taken by the parties in both a realistic way and a very pragmatic way, but keeping the principles uphold in a way that uh, Colombia can meet its international obligations and can build the political support the peace agreement uh, will need. Given that there have been considerable efforts already over the past eight years at unearthing the truth about these decades of war, why do you insist strongly in the report on the need for a truth commission? A truth commission would offer to the opportunity to build a collective narrative that can be shared by Colombians because this is the only way, and this, this has been tested in many other countries, through which societies can build effective guarantees of non-repetition when the history of a country is interpreted in a way through which the most of the society can agree on the basic terms. Do you have a sense now that there's real hope among Colombians that uh, they might actually be able to move beyond civil conflict? Is there a sense that it really could end? There is some hope in Colombians, but it's still a high degree of a skepticism about which is going to be the outcome of this peace process. And this comes both from the lack of legitimacy that FARC and the guerrillas in general have accumulated in the recent Colombian history, and also because the disappointments that previous peace processes caused between Colombians. So the government and also FARC will need to be very convincing, not only about the need to put an end to the conflict, but upon the conditions, on the conditions upon which this peace is going to be built. Javier Sierra-Lisa and Christian Volkel, both in Bogota, thank you very much. The negotiating parties in Havana have to understand that they do not represent all interested parties. So there's a circle of uh, outside interests that are not at the table, but that if their views or contributions are not acknowledged, could, could completely sabotage or spoil or derail the agreement. You have to come up with an agreement that will uh, be viable beyond the immediate interest of the two negotiating parties.